Hey guys, uh, we got something a little bit different today. This is actually a computer monitor. It's probably really hard to tell on the screen. It looks a lot like my countertop. But this is actually a dumpster find. And I don't know if it's going to do it right now. It's got kind of an intermittent problem. I think when the screen is warmed up, it goes away. But normally when you first turn it on, see here, that's not frame rate or anything like that on the camera. That's actually it blinking just on and off, on and off, on and off. And uh, if we leave it on for a little while, I think it'll actually fade out. You can see it takes, there it goes right there. And it seems to work. But I believe that the problem with this is a really common issue. And it's a really good thing to know how to fix. Um, this is a Samsung. It's the 2268W. Uh, it's actually manufactured June 2007. So it's a really... It's a 10-year-old monitor. Um, it may not seem like it's worth fixing to most people, which is why that I, I found it on the side of the road, but... Since I got it for free, and I have the parts, at least I think, I have the parts that I'll need to fix it, I think it'll be a nice little project. And it really fits in well because I just actually got a updated computer that can run dual monitors. Alright, let me see if I remember how this comes apart. There's clips that are kind of all around here. And it takes a really, really odd combination of brute force and delicacy to actually get these things to open up. But what I like to do is put my screwdriver in and just turn it a little bit while I'm pulling up on the screen just a little until you hear those scary sounding pops and then we'll work our way down the other side I'm going to have to do this one off camera, I think, because it's not the easiest thing to maneuver around. There we go. And now we'll do the top. Same thing, just work your way around. On the top side, it actually also helps to push in. on the with your screwdriver to kind of help free those clips up a little bit easier all right that is the back cover off all right now there's a small cover here we're going to remove 
I always find myself wondering whenever I'm doing disassemblies whether or not I'm wasting my time doing commentary because a lot of times I just fast forward through all of it. Getting these clips off, you can uh, either use a little screwdriver or your thumbnail or whatever. But you're just going to reach underneath here. There's a little bar and that clip grabs onto that bar. So just pick it up a little bit and pull it on out. But don't pick it up too much because you'll break those little clips off. And then y'all, the alternative, if that happens, is to actually hot glue it in. Now, this cover has to come off. Actually, yeah, it just flips up. And there it is just about it, except for this connector here, which just pulls on out. And get it out of that tape. And then be careful that you don't pull this cable too much. And now I believe that our issue is going to be on the power supply board. And we know the power supply board because it's going to have that connection right there. And this is the actual brains part of it. If you can see that a monitor actually has brains. Okay. So let's get this removed. Phillips screwdriver. If this repair is what I think it is, it's a really common issue. And you can do this on just about any computer monitor that you're going to deal with. Okay. I'm going to move the camera so that y'all can have a better look at this. Alright, we're back and we're not overexposed anymore. <laughs> okay. Now, this power supply board is a really simple, simple board. It's, it's big, but I think that they do that mainly just for kind of isolation purposes for the high voltage, low voltage, and also to allow for a better heat dissipation across these voltage regulators. So let's kind of just run through it, just the general ideas of them, is that your voltage is going to come in and transform down into some lower voltages and then it's going to get rectified and then it's going to go through these voltage regulators which is going to turn it into whatever voltage this needs and then these capacitors are filters and there's more components on here that you can go pretty deep into power supplies but we're not going to get into that lesson right now but these filter caps are oftentimes what's going to be your issue on these boards because even though there's all this room and all these ventilation holes and everything they'll still get hot and capacitors do not like heat and you can see I hope you can see that these capacitors look good because they're they're smooth flush you know, there's nothing bulgy or anything, nothing is leaking out of the tops. But these capacitors, these three are really showing what a bad capacitor should look like. The top 
looks like it's about to explode. There's this almost rusty colored stuff coming out of it. And it's just, it doesn't look good. Now, the proper way to diagnose this would be to use an ESR meter and actually check these capacitors. I don't have an ESR meter, so I would have to actually remove them from the circuit, test them with a, like the 87 on capacitance mode, which is actually not a very definitive way of seeing if these caps are actually bad or not. Visually we can see they're bad but they may actually test good and be within the specs of the capacitance. But what actually happens is that you get series resistance. That's what an ESR meter does. It measures equivalent series resistance. So you basically have not just a capacitor here but you have resistance and when that resistance gets too high is whenever you start getting or is it too low I don't remember you may have to do some research but that's when you start getting issues but we're not gonna do any kind of metering or anything like that today if I'm desoldering these it's just as easy to replace them so I know these three are bad I'll leave these for now and this one here and We'll see what, what happens with it. Alright, so we've talked about desoldering before, but I want to go over just a few things that are a little different about this. The first thing is that I actually made a mistake in my tip selection for my soldering iron. I used a, a I don't know what it is, maybe a five millimeter chisel tip, which my thinking behind it was I would hopefully be able to catch both leads of the caps and desolder it all at one time but it wasn't big enough to do that so it ended up just not working out the way I planned um, the thing that actually saved me on that was that with such a large board for these power supplies and the component spacing and the fact that it's a larger capacitor you know there's there's no surface mounts on these things most of it is through hole a little larger stuff the board can take the kind of heat that that larger tip is going to put into it so I went ahead and rolled with it um, a better thing would have been to use like a 1.5 millimeter chisel tip but it worked out really well I'm also using a different solder flux which is a no clean flux it's made by MG Chemicals and it's in the syringe. It works a lot better than the pins do. And a few things about it is that it is kind of hard to get out of the syringe. And it's also a no clean flux, which a no clean flux is not going to be one that just disappears whenever you're done soldering. A no clean flux means that when you're done soldering, the flux is not going to be acidic and it's not going to damage your traces or your PCBs so it's okay to leave it on there it's actually a little hard to clean it up if you can see right now but uh, some 99% alcohol and a little bit of time and elbow grease and it'll come out and it'll look really good another thing that I like to touch on is that it was really nice on this board that on the actual solder side of the board is where the component markings were so it was really easy to locate which caps I was replacing and put them back and that's just a, something that you don't normally see so it was just a really nice touch but I think we're just about gonna be wrapped up with this and we'll see if it works so let's see All right, so you can see that we got it put back together. Um, I still have to put the back cover on, but we got it together enough to power up, and you can see that it's working fine. There's some screen flicker because of frame rate on the camera, but 
this is hey, actually going to be a really good monitor, I think. Um, I do have another problem, though, is that I don't have room for it on my desk. So that was probably a little short-sighted, but we'll get it figured out. Now, I want to kind of talk about the capacitor that I use to change these out with. And uh, why I did it. First of all, these are really, really cheap capacitors. They're, I think all of these were like five bucks. Um, and the reason I went with the cheap ones is because it's already a 10 year old monitor. Um, I don't really need it. And um, if it doesn't last long, it doesn't last long. But I didn't want to put a whole lot of money into something that is already 10 years old and just. I might not have to replace it for years, but it doesn't matter. Not to me anyways. Um, but you also notice that some of these caps, they were actually different sizes than, this is the 330, than our original. And different values even. These are still 330s. And they're really close. They're maybe a hair smaller. But that's not going to hurt anything on that on this one actually no those are the 330 so they are different sizes that was a mistake but i mean they're they're taller it's probably hard to tell and about the same diameter but the pitch on the pins is the same so that would was really important to me and on the 820 I think I actually went with I had to go up to a to a 1000 microfarad now I didn't do this for any particular reason other than this package of capacitors came with 1000 they didn't come with the 820s but if you ever are in a bind where you I think I just went to sleep where you need to replace a capacitor if you go up to from 820 to 1000 you're not going to hurt anything especially on just these little filter caps like this so they are different but obviously it works and if the screen breaks in a week I'll let y'all know to never do this again but I think that it'll last a good while as long as I'll need it to and by then I'll be ready to upgrade anyways so I hope you learn a really simple repair that you can do to these monitors that most people just throw away and I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching